Welcome to the live streaming of the Holy Mass from the Redemptus Media Center. Let us pray for the following intentions during this sacred celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, today the Lord has given us a new day, a new day to glorify Him, a new day to make a difference to people around us with the love that God inspires in our hearts. To receive God's blessings and graces in this Holy Eucharist worthily, let us acknowledge our weaknesses, our failures, our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through, through, my fault, fault, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel and plant them on their land. A reading from the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, In that day I will raise up the booth of David that is fallen and repair its breaches and raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations who are called by my name, declares the Lord who does this. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him, sows the seed. The mountains shall drip sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel, and they shall rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they shall make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant them on their land, and they shall never again be uprooted out of the land that I have given them, says the Lord your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsoral Psalm The Lord speaks of peace for his people. 
Lord speaks of peace for his people. I will hear what the Lord God speaks. He speaks of peace for his people and his faithful and those who turn their hearts to him. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Merciful love and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth and justice look down from heaven. The Lord speaks of peace for his people. Also, the Lord will bestow his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase. Justice will march before him and guide his steps on the way. The Lord speaks of peace for his people. Please rise for the Gospel. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to His name. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, and I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to His name. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the disciples of John came to Jesus, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, but, the but for the patch tears away from the garment, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins. If it is, the skins burst, and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, to know Jesus is peace. And if there is no Jesus in our lives, then there is no peace. For Benedict XVI said some time ago that Christianity is not about a lofty ethical decision or the attaining of a great idea, but it is an encounter with an event or a person who gives a decisive new direction to our lives. And that person is Jesus. In today's Gospel passage, the disciples of John are surprised, are shocked even, that the disciples of Jesus and Jesus himself are not seen to be fasting very often. But instead, they seem to be feasting and meeting with people, socializing, while they are not preaching or moving from town to town. And so the question is, why don't you fast? Why don't you live a more ascetical life like John the Baptist or some of the Pharisees and the scribes? And so the people who are questioning Jesus and his disciples are not aware that God is doing something new in Jesus. That God is establishing a new and intimate relationship with every human person beginning with his disciples. Where Jesus is, there is no lack where Jesus is, there is fullness of life. And that is what the disciples are already experiencing in the presence of the human person, Jesus, who leads them in their mission on earth. And so to speak, Jesus is establishing a paradigm that he wants every human being to experience. The closeness of God that is so tangible, like having a real human person in our life. And that is what Jesus gives us in every Eucharist. 
the tangible experience of the closeness of God. And if we remain close to Him, then no matter our life circumstances, the Lord promises us, as we responded in the psalm, peace. The Lord speaks of peace to His people. And wherever Jesus is, there is infinite peace. There is infinite joy. And that is the ordinary state of the Christian life. But why do we fast? In special moments, like in the season of Lent, and usually on Fridays, we do have a low day to remind ourselves of the sufferings that Jesus went through for our salvation. It reminds us of our need to remain close to Jesus. And so even if we do fast as Christians, our reasons are different from those of John, the Pharisees, the scribes, and many others. In many religions, fasting and penance, tapas as they call it in India, is a way for us to attain to moksha or salvation. But in the Christian dispensation, we do not attain salvation by our acts of piety or penance. We receive salvation as a gift from God that we could never merit. And what is salvation? The closeness of God, closer than we are to ourselves. And that is the gift that Jesus gives to us. In every Eucharist, God becomes so close to us. He becomes our food. Let us receive, receive Him in spiritual communion today, as if He is with us. No, not as if. He is truly with us. Let us know Jesus and know peace. Let us stick close to Him and experience joy in the midst of our circumstances. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and good of all of Holy Church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Archbishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son. Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable now to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Prayer for, for the end of the pandemic. pandemic. Almighty, Almighty and merciful, merciful Father, Father, who show your love to all your creation, we come before you asking for the end of the pandemic currently ravaging our world. Grant healing to the sick, eternal life to the dead, and consolation to the bereaved families. Protect doctors, nurses, and others serving the sick. We pray for all governments and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, a reminder that today being Saturday, we have our Novena de Devotion to Mother of Perpetual Help, which uh, starts at 6 p.m. this evening. Please do send in your thanksgivings and petitions by 12 noon so that our volunteers can list them down and add them to the, the list to be read during the Novena. Now for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Can live as a guide, journey through life alone. Since we are most loved by a mother, Jesus gave us his own. Be with us, Mary, along the way, guide every step. Come with us, Mary, come with us, Mary, come with us.